midpoint and distance in the coordinate plane. This is lesson 1.6. That tells us there's five previous videos to this chapter. And if you become lost or confused, you can just click the description. A coordinate plane is a plane that's divided into four quadrants by a horizontal line, the x-axis, and a vertical line, the y-axis. You might remember this from middle school. The location of a point is given by an ordered pair as x, y. It's in order. The x comes first and then the y. And the x, y are coordinates of the point. So here we have a coordinate plane and it looks a little busy and that's because I drew in where the quadrants are. There's four quadrants. One, two, three, four. And you know where the quadrants are because coordinate plane starts with the letter C and the quadrants make the shape of a C. It starts here and wraps around from one to four. You can watch Algebra 1, 7.1, or the GED Math video 22A, and it'll talk about these coordinate planes. And if you've never learned about them before, you need to learn about them before we go any further in geometry. So a coordinate plane normally looks like this. It's not this busy, okay? So we can find the midpoint of a segment by using the coordinates of its endpoints. So we can find the midpoint of a segment by using the coordinates of its endpoints. We calculate the average of the x-coordinates and the average of the y-coordinates of the endpoints. So here's our midpoint formula that you should write down. M, that stands for midpoint, is equal to the quotient of x sub 1 plus x sub 2 and 2 and y sub 1 plus y sub 2 and 2. If you don't know about these little 1s and 2s down here, these are subscripts and we use them to know which x we're talking about and which y we're talking about. That's the first x and the second x. That's the first y and the second y, okay? So, we're gonna calculate the average of the x coordinates and the average of the y coordinates of the endpoints. We've got a at three for x and two for y, and b is at nine for x and eight for y. So, we've got a three comma two and a nine comma eight. We use the midpoint formula. We've got our x sub 1 plus x sub 2. The 3 plus 9 divided by 2 is a 12 divided by 2, which is a 6. Then we've got our y sub 1 and our y sub 2 as 2 plus 8 divided by 2. That's going to give us a 5. So we know the midpoint is at 6 for x and 5 for y. It's at 6 for x and 5 for y. That's the midpoint of the segment. It's dead center in the middle, isn't it? Okay? We can find the coordinates of an endpoint using the midpoint formula. So if we have point A and the midpoint, but we don't know what B is, we can use the midpoint formula. We can use this formula. So it's given that M, that midpoint, is the midpoint of segment AB. A has the coordinates of 2 for x, 2 for y. That's x sub 1 and y sub 1. And M, the midpoint, has the coordinates of 4 for x and negative 3 for y. We need to find the coordinates of B, so we're going to let B equal X and Y, okay? So that's really like the X sub 2, Y sub 2. So the formula says M equals, so we've got M is 4 for X and negative 3 for Y, and we've got our X sub 1 and our Y sub 1, so we get 2 plus X divided by 2 and 2 plus Y divided by 2. So we're going to find the X coordinate first. We know 4 is X and it equals 2 plus x divided by 2. What we do is multiply both sides by this denominator 2. And so we're going to divide the 4 by 2, and we're going to divide this term. We can do it as 2 over 1 because it's a fraction. We can just go straight across then. We do 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times x is 2x. So we've got 4 plus 2x. And the denominator 2 times 1 is 2. So now we've got 8 equals 4 plus 2x divided by 2. We can simplify this. This gives us a 2, right? 4 halves is a 2. And these 2's cancel out as a 1, so we've got 1x here. So we've got 8 equals 2 plus x. We subtract 2 from each side of the equal sign, or we could say we add a negative 2, same thing. Create a 0 pair here and we get 6 equals x. So now we know that x is a 6 for our point B. Find the y coordinate, we see negative 3 is the, y, is the y coordinate for the midpoint and we've got 2 plus y divided by 2. We multiply both sides by this denominator 2 
2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times y is 2y. So we've got 4 plus 2y divided by 2. 2 times 1 is 2. See? 4 over 2 cancels out as a 2. These 2's cancel out as a 1, so we have 1y. We've got negative 6 equals 2 plus y. We can add a negative 2 to both sides of the equation and get a negative 8 equals y. That cancels out as a 0 pair, doesn't it? So we know that point B is at 6 for x and negative 8 for y. All right? And if we were to look at this on a coordinate plane, let me move this over, it would be like this. We've got B at 6 and negative 8. See? We had these two, and now we have point B. Okay? Here's the distance formula. You should write this down. I don't want you to confuse this with distance rate and time. That's actually called uniform rate formula. The distance formula helps us find the distance between two points, x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2. Okay? So we need to find out, is segment AB congruent to segment CD? So we've got segment AB here and segment CD here. We want to know if they're identical. Are they congruent to each other? So we find the points for A. It's at 0 for x and 3 for y. Let me get a little closer so you can see this. All right. B is at a 5 for x and a 1 for y. C is at a negative 1 for x and a 1 for y. And D is at a negative 3 for x and a negative 4 for y. So now we have our ordered pairs. This is going to be x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2 for A and B. And then for the segment CD, we have x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. So these are grouped together and these are grouped together because they each represent the segment, okay? We find the distance between points A and B, and we find the distance between C and D, and then compare their distances to see if the two segments are congruent. So, using the distance formula, notice the entire thing is under a radical sign, and we've got two exponent outside the parentheses for each one. So, x sub 2 is a 5, for our first line segment AB. Okay, so we're doing AB. So x sub 2 is a 5. We need to subtract x sub 1. That's a 0. Then we need to add it to y sub 2. That's a 1 minus y sub 1, which is a 3. So here we go. 5 minus 0 is a 5, and it's squared. We've got 1 minus 3 that gives us a negative 2 squared. Well, 5 squared is 25, 5 times 5. And negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. So we've got the square of 25 plus 4, or the square of 29. We do CD, line CD. We've got a negative 3 for x sub 2 and a negative 1. So we're going to do negative 3 minus negative 1. We can, I have it in color, so I didn't have to use the parentheses, but we could put this in another pair of parentheses, couldn't we, to separate from that minus sign? Okay. Then we've got negative 4 minus 1 for y sub 2, y sub 1 here. If we have a negative 3 and we're taking away a negative 1, we're going to add the opposite, aren't we? So we're going to end up with a negative 2. We have negative 3 plus 1. We have a negative 2 squared. And negative 4 minus 1 gives us a negative 5 squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Negative 5 times negative 5 is a positive 25. We end up with the square root of 29 again. So they are the same. See? Both line segments have the distance of the square root of 29, so they're congruent. If segment AB is equal to segment CD, then segment AB is congruent to segment CD. And leaving our answer in the terms of the square roots makes them more accurate because we don't have to approximate or round them off because that's not a perfect square, is it? 29. We can't find a number that we can multiply to itself that is going to come out exactly as 29. Now, you can also watch Algebra 1 11.7b or the GED 22e video to see another couple of videos about the distance formula, okay?
You can watch this one again if you didn't get it, or you can watch these, all right? And they'll be linked in the description. All right, we can also use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two points on a coordinate plane. In a right triangle, the two sides that make the right angle are the legs. So this is the right angle. We can see the little box, that and that, those are the legs. And the side across from the right angle that stretches from one leg to the other is the hypotenuse. So that's the long side of the right triangle. Here's the Pythagorean theorem. You should write this down. It's 1.6.1. In a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the length of the legs, so whatever the length of the legs are, we square them, okay? And we add them, and it should be equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So that means a squared plus b squared is going to equal c squared. And it doesn't matter which is a, b. We can say this is a and that's b, but c is always the long one that stretches on the other side, okay, of the right angle. You can watch the grade 8 videos 12.1a, 12.1b, and 12.1c to see more about this, okay? So here we've got a is three units across, B is four units tall, we need to find C. So we do A squared, which is three squared, plus B squared, which is four squared, and that should equal C squared. Three times three is nine, four times four is 16, nine plus 16 is 25. So 25 equals C squared. We can remove the exponent two by using a radical symbol on the other side of the equal sign. So we take the 2 away, we put a radical sign around the 25, and we get the square root of 25 is 5. So we know 5 equals C. So the length of this hypotenuse is a 5. Here's our last problem. We've got a baseball field. We've got the infield and the outfield on this green and beige picture. Here's the infield right here, and here's the bases. This is home plate, first, second, and third. We know that the bases are 90 feet apart from each other. Okay? The four bases on a baseball field are 90 feet apart, making a square shape. Okay? If a player throws a ball from home plate to second base, what's the distance of the throw? We need to round our answer to the nearest tenth. So we look at the baseball field as if it were on a coordinate plane with home plate as 0, 0, the origin. Okay? So this is going to be the origin. And if they're 90 feet apart from each other, then this is 90 comma 0. X is 90, Y is 0. This is X is 90, Y is 90. This is X is 0, Y is 90, okay? And the distance from point A to point C is the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So from home plate to second base, that's going to be the hypotenuse of a triangle. We can either say it's this one or we can say it's this one. Okay. Either way, the hypotenuse is going to be the same. All right. Using the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we know a is 90. It's 90 feet. We know b is 90. So if we square them, 90 times 90 is 8,100. So we have 8,100 plus 8,100 gives us 16,200 equals c squared, that hypotenuse. We remove the two exponent by putting a radical sign around this. We use our calculator to find out what the square root of 16,200 is. We get 1.27.27 in these long decimals. So to approximate it to the nearest tenth like it wants us to, this 7 tells the 2 to go up to a 3, doesn't it? So we have 127.3 feet for that distance from home plate to second base. That's C, the hypotenuse. If we use the distance formula, then we use the coordinates of A and the coordinates of C. A is 0, 0, and C is 90, 90. And here's our distance formula. That means we're going to have 90 minus 0 plus 90 minus 0, and they're both squared. Okay, don't forget that. It's under the radical sign, all right? 90 minus 0 is 90. And same thing here, we need to square them, so we end up with 8,100 plus 8,100, just like we did here. See? That means we have the square root of 16,200, and it's just like we did over here. Let me back up a little bit. 
when we use our calculator, we can approximate it to 127.3 feet from home plate to second base. So we know from home plate to second base is 127.3 feet, okay? So I hope I explained this well enough and I hope you're doing all right. If you had any trouble, you can just watch the video again or look at the side videos that I talked about in the description. Don't forget that I've got t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, tote bags. I've even got stickers that I think are only five or six dollars that are very cute, inspirational, our next lesson is transformations in the coordinate plane. So that's going to be lesson 1.7. Oh, this is wrong. That would be lesson 1.7, wouldn't it? Sorry about that. So keep your spiral of all your formulas and theorems and axioms and definitions up to date because in Chapter 2, we're going to be doing proofs and in the middle of Chapter 2. And we're going to need these at our fingertips to be able to do the proofs. Okay? I'll see you next time. Bye.